Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're going to learn about Microsoft Graph and how you can use Microsoft Graph API in Power Automate. And if you are not aware of what is Microsoft Graph is all about, Microsoft Graph is a collection of many API or client library that allow you to connect to any Microsoft Cloud services. Now, the second question is where you can find all these details. So if you log into doc.microsoft.com and look for Microsoft Graph documentation, this space is going to give you all the information about Microsoft Graph. What I want you to check is this reference. What this page is going to show you, it's going to show you how many different API for how many different cloud services are available right now. So this space will give you an idea or information about what all different APIs are available and you can look for the use case that you're looking to solve using API. And then another page that I want you to check if you if you want to learn or, or use Graph API is the Graph Explorer. Once you log into the space, you, of course, you need to sign into that using your uh, Microsoft Cloud login. Once you signed in, you can actually test these different Graph API here easily and find the request response just for the testing so you can see how the data is coming and what all the information right like for an example i log into this microsoft graph explorer i click on this my profile you can see this is the url so graph.microsoft.com v1 that's the version one or or release one and this is the method name me what it is going to give me is going to give me all information about myself uh, I can also go to my email, right? And if I run it, it's going to just bring all of my emails. Maybe let's say inside, I can go to my recent file and this API is going to give me all of my recent file from OneDrive and for SharePoint. So there are many API available under Graph that you can use in different scenarios. And you can test them here and see how the data is coming before you start using them in Power Automate. So now let's see how we can take these different API and use them or call them from Power Automate. So I logged into uh, flow.microsoft.com. Based on your requirement, you can pick the type of flow that is applicable in your use case. I'm going to pick the instant cloud flow. Okay. Now there are multiple ways you can call an API from Power Automate if you know. So as you know, the Graph API is an HTTP based API, right? And if I search for HTTP, so there are multiple HTTP actions that are available in Power Automate to call an HTTP based API. Send an HTTP request to SharePoint. It is specific to SharePoint, so we cannot use it. Then there is an HTTP. Let's see what is there. If you look at this action, this action allows you to call any HTTP endpoint. We can definitely call Graph API using this HTTP, but if you're going to do so, you need to set up this authentication to as your AD and then provide this information. This will require a little bit more work for you to log into the Azure and do some work. So we're not going to use this one. Instead, I'm going to use HTTP with Azure AD. Okay. Now, what is the difference between this and the other HTTP? Because this is based on the Azure AD, so you don't need to worry about the authentication. It is automatically going to take the logged in user or the user who is running this flow and based on that logged in user is going to run this HTTP. Okay. So it will reduce your work to set up those Azure applications and all of that. Okay. Now let's see how we can use this. So number one thing that you need to do, if you are using this first time, you will get this page where you need to provide the base resource URL and Azure AD resource URL. In both boxes, you need to pass graph.microsoft.com. Click sign in. It's going to ask you to authenticate yourself, select your ID, and your connection will be created. Done. Okay. After you've done that, everything is going to be very straightforward. You need to first select the URL that you like to call from the Power Automate. So let's say I'm, I'm trying to get all of my recent file. And in the Graph Explorer, you can see the type of this API. It's, as you can see, it's a get. 
If you don't see your API that you're trying to use in Graph Explorer, of course, you can look at the documentation and you will find the same information here as well. So this is the get method. So you need to select the method, whether it's a get, post, delete, or other. Then just copy the entire URL, right? This is the URL of, of your API. If it is a get, mostly you don't need to pass any header. But if it is a post, then you may need to pass some header. That information you can find from this Graph Explorer or from the documentations. Okay. And I'm going to say save and test. Okay. So flow completed successfully. I made a call. And if you look at the data here, I got all the response. This is the response coming in the JSON format that I can definitely process. Now let's take another example. So now I'm going to try to do search. So the search graph API allow you to search in your email, in the events, in SharePoint list item, in OneDrive. And if I go to the reference here, and if you go to the search, this is where you can find all the information about the search API. And these are the different area where you can use this API to search. You can search in the email, event, drive, drive item, list, list item sites. So we're going to try to call this from our Power Automate. So we know the URL and this time it's a post. So I'm going to change this get to post, change the URL. And if you notice, this time we have a request body because you need to pass entity type that is where you want to search and what is your query, what you want to search. So very easy, copy it. And in the body request, I'm going to just paste that information. This you can ask from user or you can dynamically pass this information or I can create input, right? So I just created two input parameter and then what you can do, you can just replace them. Click save. And now when I test, it's gonna ask me what is the type and what is the query. So let's say I'm gonna pass the message and I'm looking for Microsoft in my email. I click run flow, it's gonna make the call to the search graph API and it will give me the results. And as you can see, I got the response. So this is how easy it is to call any API. Okay. That's the one way of calling it. There's another way also to call Microsoft Graph API, very similarly how you're calling using uh, HTTP with uh, Azure AD. Search for Office 365 and you see something called Office 365 groups. In here, there is an action called send an HTTP request. Please note, this is in preview, and that's the reason uh, it's not a highly recommended way of calling Graph API. But if you want to play around, if you want to do some POC, you can definitely use it. This is a send an HTTP request. Select that. How we were doing in our previous action, you just need to do this very similar information. URI, it's, an, it's your URL for your Graph API. Method, body, and then you have your application type. You can also have more custom header if you have in your request. If not, then you don't need to pass. Let's try again, okay? It's gonna ask me, let's say this time I want to drive item or maybe list item. Okay, so I'm changing and I'm, I'm looking into searching in maybe SharePoint and OneDrive. Perfect. So both API call works. Now, as I said at the beginning, the number one thing if you want to explore and start using Graph API, you need to know your use case. This is the introductory video. I just wanted to show you the different way you can use in Power Automate to call those API very easily. You don't need to really go and do a lot of things before you start using them. So find your use case, find the right API that is applicable for your use case. If it is available in Graph Explorer, easy, because you can just quickly test, see the data, find the request header body, and use it in your flow. If not, you can also come here and look at these documentation and they will give you the very similar information that you need for Power Automate. Okay. Yeah. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.
keep learning keep watching thank you